Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 7 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the construction of a modified design of the flight control stick that we can see on screen before us now. And then after constructing that we're then going to look at its implementation into the existing front dash frame that we'd built in some previous videos and by the end of this video what we see in front of us now we should have physically built and ready to fly. Let's buckle up. So as we start to build this now, we can break it down into a few key parts. So the first part that I'm interested in looking at is this extension here. Just have a bit of a closer look at it. So this extension here, which will sit in between the handle and the base. And two adapters will be produced. The top one of which is drawn in here and will screw into the bottom of the handle and another one of these will be made which is not drawn in here but it will actually sit at the top of this base just here and with those two adapters in place it will allow this tube to be attached to either end and then there'll be a number of screws that will go pass through the tube into the adapter to secure it here and the same at this end. But what will be different at this end is the holes that the screws pass through will be elongated, there'll be slits effectively that will allow this handle to be deflected, to be rotated a number of degrees either to the left or to the right and when it's at the position that's just right to fly with it can then be tightened up. And we'll finally on this part just have a look at the wiring that is necessary. A little extension lead if you like that will allow this to plug into the base. There's a number of ways to produce these adapters. My first thoughts were to look online and try to find a, a unit that's already out there that would you could just buy and it would just act as an adapter perhaps with just a small modification to it. So if we just bring up uh, something that I saw on the ED forums, that's a good example of that. You can see here um, a flight control stick and it's been extended. But what's interesting is they've done that via a garden hose adapter, which is obviously of the right thread for it to fit. If I just scroll down here, you can have a bit of a closer look at some of the pictures of what they've done. And with a small modification to it, a little bit of aluminium tubing they've used has just gone gone in place and, and been secured. So that was the first way for me to do it. The second way was to 3D print the adapter and on the forums there's something that's been put up recently where someone's done a heli extension and they've very kindly shared what they've done there so if we have a bit of a look at that you can see this 3D printed item here which they've very kindly put on Thingiverse so for anyone with a 3D printer you could always look to download that maybe make a few little tweaks and modifications to it but that's something that you could just print and put in place so I was initially looking at either of these two options, but there was actually a third option where my father-in-law had a spare bar of aluminium in his workshop and he's a bit of a wizard on his lathe, so we were able to produce the adapters on that. So we started by cutting a end portion off that cylinder of aluminium. And then it was machined on the lathe and it was turned and screw cut. So what we're looking at now is one end of the adapter that's machined so it's the right diameter to slide into the tube which will act as the extension. The adapter is really nice to handle, feels proper high quality. 
So just to recap while I'm going to the lengths of doing an extension between the handle on the base as well as an extension from the base to the floor. The reason for this extension is to create uh, an extra amount of travel of the handle and in doing that gives some extra control. Continuing work on the adapter, taking that one and spinning it round, now bore a hole into the other end with a thread that was, as I recall, 13 TPI and that gave it a, a really good fit. I'm using some off cuts of the tubing that I've chosen uh, just at this point so I can just check there's a good fit from that onto the adapter. Ultimately the length that I've decided to go with for the extension will be cut at 77mm. I think that from what I've seen feels about the right length to, to work with and test. And the pipe that I chose was from a company called Screwfix. It's just £3.89 this one. You get a 3 metre length for that. The uh, colour of it's great. It's uh, not too much of a glossy finish. It, it, it's got a good matte look to it. Um, so no need to repaint. And just having a quick look at the specs here, you can see it's a 32mm diameter, which was just perfect for what I was looking for. The next task was to create a small extension wire that would obviously pass through that new extension tube, which we said would be 77mm long, and allow the handle to connect into the base. This would be a PS2 style cable and connector and what we would need to do here is rather than just have your typical PS2 cable this would need to be an extension one in that it's male at one end and female at the other. Your typical PS2 wire and connector has six pins whereas the Thrustmaster Warthog Hotus um, within the flight control stick of that only uses five so what I chose to do here was get a PS2 cable a standard extension one and to modify that to work with these five pin connections so what you can see here on the left is the physical standard six pin PS2 extension cable I have and on the pin out diagram you can see on the left of that a six pin schematic and you can see that matches to the the real one we need to modify it so it will work as would the five pin on the right the changes needed are to take the male end of the six pin cable to snap the extra pin off you don't need and to also break off the middle piece of plastic and that way that will plug in to the five pin just fine and the only change to the female end of the six pin connector is to just extend the rectangular cutout so it can fit into the five pin male end. The ends of the connectors now fit as needed into the flight control stick and everything works as it should. I did find that uh, when looking at a number of different PS2 extension cables that uh, the pins on the male end are thicker on some than others and for it to fit properly into the Warthog flight stick you need one that has uh, thinner pins. I cut either end of the PS2 cable off and expose all of the wires within it and I then terminate the ends and they can then be connected together as one shorter extension. Here's a quick before and after. And you can also see that it fits within the tube and protrudes enough just to plug into either end of the flight control stick. So that's the extension completed that will sit in between the handle and the base of the flight control stick. So to this point we've completed the extension here and that is now installed between the handle and the base. What we now need to look at is an adapter that sat at the bottom of this base 
which allows it to connect into the top of this tube. And then we can look at this rectangular wooden box that the tube goes into. And at that point we'll be ready to install this unit into the front dash. An 18mm piece of MDF with a circular cutout which was done on the CNC machine with counterbores for the M4 screws that will go in to secure it to the underside of that base and also brass inserts which mean that it can be secured within the pipe that it will sit and the width of the protruding piece of wood is such that it will drop nicely uh, and fit into that tube. A rectangular slit just from the outer side of the circular MDF inward which allows the cable to pass through and then the cable is secured so you've got strain relief on that. I also use screw fix for the larger pipe. Uh, this one's a little bit more expensive as you can see on screen. Uh, it comes with a quite a length of it so there's certainly some spare and left over. Uh, in looking at the specifications of this, the diameter of that's 110 millimeters, which was ideal because that's virtually identical to the the diameter of the actual base of the flight control stick. So when the base sits on top of this tube it literally looks as one unit all of the same diameter. A quick look at where we're up to and then it's time to build the rectangular base for this to sit in. All of the pieces of wood have been cut they're now placed and clamped together. It's secured together with screws and I can just check at this point that it does slide as needed under the main unit. It's now completed and ready to paint. I sand, prime and then paint a number of coats. In the final steps I can now move this unit into position. You can see that from within the box, the slits allow a bolt to be inserted from above, which we can go ahead and do now. The cabling, which comes out the bottom of that pipe, then passes through the rectangular box and at the back of the console where it's hidden from sight. Whilst in the future I do plan to build some kind of ejection seat, I've got a temporary seat here which I've made a cutout in so that can tuck up right close to the new flight control stick as needed. And I'll just take a little bit of a close up look at that just so it's clear how the chair marries up against the flight control stick. So all that's left to do now is have a flight test and check that it's all working as expected. Some low altitude flying, weaving in and out of the mountains, feels brilliant. With the flight control stick implemented, I'll now spend a short period of time flying and thinking through and researching the other instruments that I'll be building and documenting in future videos. Thanks for watching.